<laughs> hello, Jamie. Hello, hello. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Can you hear me? Yes. I can. It's it's so great to see you, my dear friend. It's been a while. <laughs> it's been a while. Yes. How, it's fantastic having you here. Uh, yeah. Likewise. And I just I want to say thank you so much for everything you're doing uh, this week and throughout these last years and more than a decade to promote uh, the idea of happiness uh, and, and conversation around happiness, open-minded discussion about it. Uh, you understand the importance for the world, as many people have, and you have dedicated yourself to uh, to, to promoting the concept uh, and, and promoting research around the concept. And I just, I want to say thank you, and it's great to see you. It's great to be with you today. So, well, I mean, coming from you is very important. We are friends. Everybody knows we are partners. Yeah, uh, we are partners uh, and friends. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. In this capitalist journey. But, um, I mean, what you've done in order to, uh, to actually create the frameworks, the support, and the reality, because some people dream and they say, oh, it could be fun to have a day of happiness, uh, and other people do it. So, <laughs> so this, is, this is very important that we have in the world people like you who say, okay, we have to do this, and we do it. Uh, so I would like to start with that. It's like, I mean, you are amazing. Uh, Jamie, you know that. Uh, but I would love to frame now these 25 minutes that we have around uh, something that came out today. Today, you know, we are focused on public policy. And one of the outputs is we need to do better at uh, expressing and uh, somehow creating the narratives that bring economic systems into a new paradigm because we are, we are already living in a new paradigm. So why don't we why don't we start talking about new paradigms and why don't you actually give us some light about what's going on in the world with these new paradigms and why actually we came out with capitalism? Sure, thank you so much uh, for that comment and, and question. Uh, you know, we're all living in a world where things are changing so quickly and transforming so quickly. Uh, the COVID pandemic that we're living through right now is perhaps the greatest example because we are all going through it together. Uh, and, um, you know, when, although this moment is, of course, associated with the time of and the context of what we are going through, the subject of happiness, which goes back to the beginning of time and the beginning of thinking and the very beginning of thought itself um, has recently gained uh, new uh, prominence and new uh, uh, excitement because of the, uh, and let me just say the kingdom of Bhutan, who uh, brought the concept uh, of gross national happiness, uh, which is their sort of uh, uh, ethos at a country level, uh, to the United Nations in 2011 and 2012, uh, coinciding with a broad-based growth in understanding and research about human happiness, et cetera. But it was Bhutan who really came through and, 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 and made the statement at a global level by getting UN Resolution 65309 adopted by the United Nations in 2011 calling for a new economic paradigm and calling for a new thinking. If you look at the resolution, as well as the high level meeting on happiness and well-being, which was convened by the government of Bhutan, you will see all of the makings, the ingredients, and the uh, global call, thanks to Bhutan, for new thinking about how we all live and the systems that drive our lives and govern our, our everyday lives. So I'll begin with that and saying thank you to Bhutan and thank you to Luis for, again, I just want to say thank you to Luis for bringing everyone together during this week. Of course, this International Day of Happiness uh, was initiated in 20, I should say, recognized by the United Nations in 2013 uh, following a campaign, uh, but it is something that has grown and been a milestone, an annual milestone, an annual opportunity for everyone to come together 
around the subject of happiness and new economic paradigms. And thank you to you for turning it into a week uh, and bringing the entire global community of happiness together to discuss this topic. So thank you. Well, um, thank thank you, <laughs> uh, Jamie, for being here. So can we can we go deeper into um, why do you think that capitalism can be the new paradigm? Sure, thank you. We can quickly take a historical look back uh, to the developments of recent times in the last 100 and 200 years. Specifically, we can say that there was a new world order that was launched by the end of World War II that kind of created the world that we live in. And after World War II, which gave the birth to the United Nations and, and a kind of global governance and global unity, a global uh, coherence around the causes that we all face as human beings, uh, through to the 1980s and 1990s, where you know that, that period was, you could say, typified by the, the battle between capitalism and communism in many ways, which ended with the fall of the Berlin Wall and the victory of capitalism. And capitalism is one of the greatest inventions of humankind. It has increased uh, our, our overall well-being and happiness broadly uh, in the sense that it has increased our, um, our uh, uh, um, uh, uh, all, the, all the, the, the wealth of the world is such that we are able to live better lives, whether it be through greater economic abundance, uh, lower death rates amongst uh, children, uh, higher incomes, uh, greater wealth, etc. cetera. Um, with that said, we've also learned that there have been byproducts of capitalism that are not necessarily productive and conducive to the human flourishing. Uh, capitalism has led to greater inequality. Capitalism has led to the challenges that we face, perhaps the greatest threat, climate change. Um, capitalism has led to greater misery and anxiety, especially amongst the developed economies. And so the subject of, of, of happiness and happy -tilism, which we have been working to uh, uh, curate and advance, uh, is perhaps the most important thing because it answers the great dilemma of capitalism, which is how do we reconcile the benefits of capitalism and the costs of capitalism? How do we embrace and activate the true uh, uh, DNA of what is inside of every human being, that we care more about love than money, uh, ultimately, that we care more about helping our neighbor and our brother and sister and the people and, and strangers over trying to figure out how to exploit them and employ them in some way of labor, um, that we care more about uh, sharing and We care more about uh, just generally promoting the advancement of society and promoting dreams for all people as opposed to figuring out how to employ them in a way that extracts their labor and produces only economic growth. So, yeah, I mean, it's fascinating, the, the evolution. And today, uh, Jamie, we heard from uh, Mariano Rojas and Ruger and Jeffrey Sachs and John Hollywood is so much right now on the table that um, I think that it is it's interesting that it, we are still in very early stage of, um, um, in this case, advancement into the, these new paradigms, but it's going to take some time. So the question Absolutely. is about, the question is about, can we go a bit deeper about what is capitalism? Can we, can we talk about that? And what do you think is going to be kind of the, the, the low hanging fruit where we can start building a, this new genus and paradigm? Yeah, great, great question. And by the way, I'd love to ask you some questions and get your thoughts as well, because I, I know you have a wealth of knowledge and I appreciate that. And I believe that it should be spoken about in this, in this context and in this session. Um, you know, Capitalism and the way that we live now 
was really sort of created and innovated at a time when we didn't have the context of many of the benefits that we have now, technology, uh, automation, uh, new understanding about governance, new abilities to communicate in real time about global events, which we just didn't have just 10, 20 years ago. So, um, you know, the, the low hanging fruit is to look at the wealth that we have created in the world, um, which is extraordinary and is due to capitalism, uh, perhaps the greatest invention, as I said, of humankind. Um, but the wealth that we've created, if you look at global financial markets, if you look at the economic growth, we have created so much wealth. And yet there we also have, um, you know, the, 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 the ability to use technology to set people free and to enable them to pursue their lives as opposed to necessarily being part of a system of governance or an economic system that calls them to have a job or to have an identity that's associated with just production and just being part of the system. Uh, we have the unique opportunity at this time as a result, frankly, of technology and the advancement of technology and communications to rethink how people should live their lives every day. Right now, we have that chance. And the coronavirus epidemic really demonstrated that for us because suddenly the world of work stopped. Suddenly the world of, of, of commerce stopped and governments put forth uh, uh, stimulus and, 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 and what you might call um, uh, 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 basic income to people who were not working. And we were able to see the benefits that resulted, which were higher stock markets, a return to confidence, uh, a return to the work of art. People like to work when they're working on things that they're passionate about. It's no longer work, it's, their, it's what they love doing. And that's the world that we need to move towards. Um, we learn more about remote work and the idea that, 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 that uh, you don't necessarily have to go to an office or commute to an office uh, uh, to, to do your work or to do what you love. Um, and so the low hanging fruit, very much exposed by the context of the world that we're living in now, is how do we think about every human being in a way where we, number one, we address the fact that they are a human being, that we're all human beings, and we put their health, well-being, their dreams, their goals, their ideas, and their journey, which is not a straight line, first. First. Not everyone comes from a great family like yourself or myself. Many people come from difficult situations. In fact, the majority of people do. How do we create a society and a system that enables them and empowers those people to flourish so that we all benefit? And it is a, you know, taking a capitalist sort of view, we all benefit from a society where everyone is doing well, everyone is flourishing. And that's what happy to listen is about. So to answer your question more directly, the time that we are living in, these events most recently, are perhaps the greatest sign and the greatest opportunity for us to move a new economic paradigm, a new philosophy, a new way of life, happy to listen, focusing on the primacy of happiness, well-being, and freedom for all people, forward. Uh, and, 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 and happy to listen just to cut through and move forward on our presentation, happy to listen proactively seeks, seeks, that not only puts it as the primacy, but seeks the happiness, well-being, and freedom of all life on Earth. And, um, you know, in a world where there's so much abundance, and Louise, you've written about abundance ex extensively, and uh, uh, um, where happiness is contagious and there's an exponential factor, as you have explained as well, um, we, at this time, in this great era of advancements, and the opportunity to say, what's going on here? Let's look at what we've done. It's been great, but how can we correct? How can we think forward? What can we do to turn the page so that we can set all human, all humanity, all human beings free to achieve their own happiness, uh, well-being, and freedom? Um, so that's my answer to your question. Uh, <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. And I love the... I mean, something that we have right now that we didn't have before, and yesterday we focused one whole day on technology. 
is all these transformative technologies that we didn't have 50 years ago, not even, not even 20 years ago. So from a technological point of view, oh my goodness, we are, we are so far uh, that we can, that now we have to be patient in order to move human beings at the right path because otherwise it's not gonna work. But what we know as well is that uh, it takes a uh, consciousness raising, especially for leaders, in order to get it. Because if we have leaders that are not able to get into their subconscious and actually understand what's really going on, is is really, really, is really, I mean, it's not going to work. So one of my questions to to Jeffrey is how we do how do we raise level of consciousness with uh, with leaders? And he said, he said, well, bring women uh, to power. We see this in many cases. So can we can we go deeper into uh, when we talk about capitalism? Is this a governance by women? What is what is becoming a capitalist? What does it mean? Who is a capitalist, and how do we become a capitalist? Yeah, it's a great question, and uh, one that you could also, I'd love to hear your thoughts as well, as my dear partner, but thank you for asking me. Um, let's focus briefly on the subject of women, which you've introduced in this conversation, and, which is, and, and gender broadly, which is so important. First, the capitalist system is based on a man-made and man-visioned, a male-visioned world. And, you know, we've got to move to a system whereby the, 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 the very valuable, if not more valuable, vision and empathy and understanding and values of women is incorporated directly into our economic system. When you look at our economic system of capitalism, it's based on over-self-interest, over-competition, uh, exploitation in many cases um, to get a very optimal result. We see the dominance of the man. Uh, whereas if we can create a new paradigm, a new way of thinking that balances all voices, men, women, and all genders, uh, and in particular, let's just speak about women because, of course, this is one of the most important topics and, and subjects of, of, of recent development. As we go through this period in our human history, women have been under, underrepresented. Un, underrepresented, sorry. Um, you know, women uh, bring a uh, new perspective with respect to um, less ego, uh, less... Uh, uh, um, uh, less exploitation and more nurturing and more uh, uh, how can we nurture the human race and nurture our economic development systems as opposed to exploit people as part of our growth plan. And so we absolutely need more women into our system. And I, I really, I, I'm going to talk about this more in some of our upcoming pieces and, and but it, it's such a powerful and important topic you bring up. Um, I didn't have a father. I was raised by a single mother who raised three children, and I'm I'm, I'm blessed to have the the, the perspective of, of of women from that perspective because I was only raised by women, my mother and my sisters. Um, but uh, when you look at our economic system, it is male dominated, and um, absolutely we need to go. We need to increase gender equality, but we need to go above and beyond that to a mindset that incorporates the visions and views of all genders, especially women, and embraces the differentiated approach that they bring to our leadership, our management, our society, that I believe is more holistic and um, nurturing of uh, in a world where we need to you know step back from so much competition and so much aggression and exploitation and move towards a world where we're all working together to promote human flourishing so thank you for that question uh, it's a good one and uh you know the the, the idea of women and, and let me just say the idea of women the the, the perspective of women in all genders is something that we are really myself and yourself working to incorporate in capitalism 
Um, one of the things that we will be doing as we grow is reaching out further to the great community of thinkers who you have curated and brought together um, so that we can get their visions and opinions and also uh, ensure to reference and cite them in our work on our research level so that there is equal representation, uh, not just in numbers. It's not just about some quota. It's about ideas. It's about perspective and philosophy and ways of thinking. We want to incorporate the female perspective as well as the, the perspective of all genders who may not have been identified by our society in our work to advance capitalism. I love the answer. Uh, Jamie, how do we, what are the steps to become a capitalist? Oh, thank you for that. Uh, well, you know, you know better than I do, but I think that the, the first step is, you know, stepping stepping outside of yourself and, and looking at the world that you're living in, because we are all in a capitalist world. We are all in a world that begins with our education, our training by our parents and tutelage and our growth and our meeting of friends. And, and then we get enforced, we get sort of taken through that path of, of, of li our life path, our life journey. And all of that is shaped by capitalism. And, and it's amazing, but it's also got drawbacks as we all are recognizing now. And so my, my advice would be to um, first develop a sense of self-awareness and self-philosophy to step, a step outside of yourself and look at yourself as if you're looking into yourself like a philosopher and, and, and ask yourself the hard questions of, of, you know, how are you living your life? Do you feel like it's the life that you would like to live? Um, how does it coincide or reconcile with the life that society has presented for you? Um, and, and the knowledge that we have about capitalism and the world that we live in. Uh, that would be the first thing. The second thing would be to focus on self-love. If you yourself are not strong, and, and that is totally understandable given the extraordinary inputs that we face in the capitalist system. If you yourself are not strong, then you cannot sort of manifest your strength to other people. You cannot manifest your, your inherent uh, superhero powers that are part of every single person and every human being uh, in the way that you may be able to do so. So focus on self-love. Um, don't let the system decide how you're going to live. You decide how you're going to live, and you recognize that the system is there. So self-love, uh, eating well, meditation, not exposing yourself to anxiety if it's too much, um, you know, spending time with friends and family, cultivating healthy social connections, as explained and expanded upon in the World Happiness Reports and lots of research. Um, but yeah, you know, focus on self-love and, and making sure you are strong no matter what. Uh, and the third thing I would then go into the things that are the classic happy to list, which are to uh, be a giver uh, over a taker, um, to uh, recognize that that's a difficult position. You may get taken advantage of uh, over time because of the world we live in, but to continue on that path to being a giver, um, to being an activist and active in general in life. Um, stay active physically, stay active in the things that you really care about and the things that you want to do and pursue and perceive and uh, help your friends, help your neighbor, uh, look proactively into ways that you can actually help the world, help your friends, help your immediate community, help your immediate family. Um, other ways would be uh, uh, to, uh, uh, seek out challenge. I would say that the happy to list is someone who is a challenge seeker um, and, and not necessarily to win a game, but for the fun of the journey. Uh, and uh, uh, so seek out challenge, uh, seek out truth, seek out adversity. Um, other things I would think about are to uh, think about just being a healer as someone who can heal other people who have been wounded, um, who may have faced negative uh, uh, consequences and just look out to be a kind of master uh, uh, healer of, of, of difficult circumstances that are part of the human condition. Um, so those are some of the, the, 
aspects of the happy to list that I would throw out. Um, why don't you give a couple, Luis, since we are co <laughs> co uh, workers on this endeavor? What are your yeah. thoughts? Do you, you know that self-awareness and self-love is is the first step? That's different. Actually, when yesterday I was um, interviewing, talking with Richard Rad, it was so interesting what he showed us, the human wounds and how they correlate to human suffering and, he, and collective wounds. And it was so interesting to see how repression is the first wound of humanity and right. how self-love is the first virtue and the, the cure and the vaccine to the whole system. So, so, so I would say, I mean, yeah, if we were just able to go deeper into self-compassion, self-love, we will heal the planet as a whole, because we are impacting just in ourselves, And then we, we know how exponential and happiness is to share, right? That's what we say. So yeah, the only thing I would add to the list is, is the concept of, of consciousness. Is the concept of how do we raise and how we elevate consciousness by going into the subconscious. Because this is, this is a still, we are still really far from understanding that this subconscious is really what is, is driving a, us in autopilot in so many ways. So I think that that requires that self-awareness that you are saying, uh, but we, ha we have to move to the next step, which is mindfulness. We have to be mindful. And then we get to a third step that is transcendence. But I feel those are uh, stages of evolution for everybody, but if we don't, if we are not able to get there, then uh, it's going to be very difficult for so many people to 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 have to, to change. So that would be I would I would add to the list just that. Um, no, we have you. we have a couple of minutes. Okay, your recommendation. What do we do now? Okay, imagine. Okay, I want to become a happy list. What do I do? Uh, wow, gosh. Uh, I would say first. Um, you know, take take in the mindset and the philosophical ideation and identity of a happy to list for yourself. Have a conversation with yourself about what it means to be happy, to spend your life on this planet, to live your life in a purposeful and intention driven way where you are fulfilling your own goals and desires and thinking and theories and philosophies while also looking at the community around you and then beyond that, the planet. And I would say that you should think about those things and begin to adopt those things that you feel are best for you to become a happy to list number one. Number two, I would say that, uh, you know, we are working to create a community, a global community of belonging. And, um, you know, belonging is something that I believe is alongside, you know, purpose and belonging are both two critical elements of human, fundamental human flourishing that are lost by capitalism and old world paradigms and the things that have driven the way that we live now. So I would say think about your purpose and what you want your purpose to be you don't have to get it right the first time uh think about also belonging and uh so my second my book piece of advice is Luis is creating a community of belonging through the world happiness foundation and the world happiness week and the world happiness fest building on the great inspiration and leadership of many others many countries many organizations like the United Nations who have come before us and laid the framework for us to advance this concept. Um, and so I would say join us and join Luis and the World Happiness Foundation uh, as part of joining a group of uh, 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 individuals who have a shared mindset and are part of a community, a global community that addresses the, the topic of belonging and the subject of belonging because we all belong 
together. Uh, so uh, join the World Happiness Foundation. Uh, and then third, I would just say, recognize that you are part of a global movement that is working to advance the happiness of all mankind, all humankind. Uh, 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 some very extraordinary events occurred in 2010, 2011, 2012 that resulted in the United Nations calling for a totally new economic paradigm that advances the happiness of all life on earth. And in so doing, they called for the questioning of GDP as the indicator of pro human progress. They questioned the idea that human progress should only be based on money or profit and called for a new economic paradigm whereby money, whereby human progress and human flourishing would be measured by happiness, by thriving, by flourishing, by whether people are doing well in their in their in their in their lives mentally, socially, uh, and from a happiness standpoint. Those were the primary uh, values and principles that came out of the United Nations high level meeting on happiness and well being and which have been celebrated by the International Day of Happiness ever since. And so I would say to refer to those and recognize that you are part, you belong, you are part of this great global movement that brings together all of humanity with the ultimate goal of achieving the happiness, well-being, consciousness, and freedom of all life on earth by 2050 or beyond. we got to set a goal. Exactly. <laughs> My friend is is amazing. Uh, it's always amazing. As Actually, always, having, you, having you wrapping up uh, all these waves is is I feel so good. So thank you, Jamie. Uh, thank let's you. become happy. That is an invitation to everybody. This is Absolutely. not exclusive. This is completely open, and this it's is very open. open. And this is for everybody. So thank you, Jamie, and I see you very soon. See you soon, my brother. Take care. Bye. Bye.